Hey, what's up? Welcome back. In this episode, you're gonna see how to upload files to AWS S3. We've already got file uploading working with our Rails application. If you haven't seen that episode, head over and take a look. And the goal, the end goal here is that we can create images for our products as part of this creator platform. And we want those images to end up on Stripe Checkout. So we want to pass them ultimately over to the Stripe Checkout flow, which we're gonna do by creating publicly accessible URLs with ngrok. It's gonna be a fun episode. So we've got image uploading already working, but it's not going to S3. So the first thing we need to do is install the AWS S3 gems. So we're gonna say bundle add AWS SDK S3, and this will add that gem to our gem file. Now active storage comes with this storage.yaml thing that configures how you interact with Amazon or any of the other storage providers. So there's Amazon, you can put stuff in GCP or Azure, or you can even mirror between several different services. So what we're gonna do is go through and I'm gonna walk through the entire process of setting up your S3 bucket because I think that part is actually the most tricky part. So at the end of the day, we need an access key, a secret access key, the region where our bucket is, and then the name of the bucket. And by default here, this suggests maybe we do like the name of the bucket dash and then a, an environment. So let's log into the AWS console. So you can go to like, I don't know, it just if you search for like AWS console, uh, there should be something at the top, the AWS management console. All right, so let, we're gonna log back in. You may need to log in. Now you wanna go to S3, and the very first thing we're gonna do is create a new bucket. So I'm gonna click on create bucket here, and the bucket in this case, let's call it creators, let's see, creators uh, development. And we're gonna put this in East, US East one. So now we're gonna say, um, we don't want any of this public access stuff enabled. Just keep everything disabled for now. Keep all the defaults and just create a bucket with a name in a location that's near you. So now we have this creators development bucket and it's in US East one. The next step is we want to go to IAM. This is for our access management. So we're gonna to go to IAM and we're going to create a brand new user. So we're gonna to go to IAM, click on users and say, add new user. The name of this user is gonna be like creators, active storage agent. I don't know, it doesn't really matter what you call this as long as you have a specific user that has an access key for programmatic access. The permissions we're going to attach directly to a specific permission of some S3 full access. So we're gonna check that box and say, we don't need any tags. We're gonna review this. This looks good. Okay, we're gonna create the user. And at this point, we're now, we now have an access ID. So I'm gonna copy that. And we wanna store this in our credentials. Credentials, Rails credentials colon edit. We're gonna create a new section here called AWS. And this is gonna be called access key ID. We're gonna paste that in. We're also going to add our secret access key. And this secret access key is hidden. So we're gonna copy that and paste it in. Um, what I found is you actually need to wrap this in quotes sometimes, depending on what your key, if it has slashes, sometimes it'll mess things up. So I'm gonna call that good. So I've got my access key ID and my secret access key. Those are both in my credentials, saved away, and we're good to go. Now, if we open up our storage.yaml, remember that when you set those credentials, they need to match the names that are here. So access key ID and secret access key and AWS as sort of that top level key. All right, so our region is, our region for our bucket is, what is it? I think it's US East one, right? Not US East two. Yeah, US East one, so that's good. Now the name of the bucket is creators-development. So I should be able to just change this to creators and then the Rails environment will be development. Okay, the next thing we need to do is open up development.rb and set the active storage. Instead of the service being local, I'm gonna set that to Amazon. Now this is gonna make it so that in development, we should be uploading files to Amazon. So let's restart our server since we installed a new gem for the AWS uh, SDK. We're gonna jump over to our creator thing and go back and create a new product. We're gonna create a new product, give it an image here. 
We're gonna say open, give it some currency, and we got status zero. Okay, so if you get an error that says you, you found some error storing the thing and it has some status here, that's actually good because we can go to our logs and figure out what's wrong. So we have some error, it says S3 storage generated URL for file at this key. So if we grab this URL, we can see that the error is related to the signature. It says signature does not match the request signature, blah, blah, blah. It's actually not related to the signature at all. This is related to cores, okay? So in my experience, this error, this specific error was related to cores. So you need to go to the bucket, go to permissions and scroll down to the cores section. So cross origin resource sharing, we need to edit this. And inside of the rails docs for active storage, there is an example cores configuration. So you can copy that and paste it inside of our cores stuff. Now this is going to only allow put requests instead of get requests. It's also only allowing requests for uh, example.com. So what we want to do is make this star for now so that we can come from a couple different domains. We'll go back over here to our creator platform, refresh, test, test, select the image that we want to upload, uh, 333, create product. Okay. So now it has created the product. And if we inspect this, we should see that it is actually hosted on S3. Now the source here is localhost 3000 slash, and then like this representation, right? Let's copy the URL and then go over and use curl dash V and paste in that URL. So you'll notice that the response we get back is uh, initially is going to be a 302 found. Okay. So this is giving us a redirect back. Now the location of the underlying file is actually this creators uh, development S3 bucket that lives on Amazon, but the file uh, that, or like the source for the file that we're seeing in, uh, in the source here is localhost. So why does that matter? That matters because when we send an image over to Stripe, Stripe needs to have a publicly accessible URL. Localhost 3000 is not publicly accessible. And so, what we're gonna do is use ngrok. So we're gonna fire up ngrok on this CJAV dev subdomain. And now we should be able to browse to this, like, I don't know, whatever. If we go to like ngrok or cjav dev.ngrok.io, we're gonna see this error message. And this is because by default now, Rails has a tool that prevents access from different domains, whatever. It's some security thing. What we need to do is go into our uh, application.rb and set config.hosts is equal to nil. Now, if you know the list of hosts, you can add them into this array, but for now, I'm just going to remove that and I'm going to restart the server so that we can just move along with our little demo here. All right, so we're back in action. And now if we go to our dashboard, we could go through the process of creating a product one last time. And this product again, will have the same image. But the difference is when we look at and inspect where this image is hosted, you'll notice that it's coming from cjavdev and grok.io. And this is a publicly accessible URL. So this is a URL that you could access from, uh, from Stripe. And so now what we can do is we can take this URL and set that as the product image URL so that when we go to checkout, we actually see that image. So let's go over to uh, our products controller and walk through the flow of what's happening now. So we're creating this product, saving it to the database. Um, just as a side note, we might actually just want to check like, is the product valid? If so, make the API call to Stripe to create the thing. If that was successful, then save the product. Otherwise you kind of end up with a bunch of funky sort of like in the middle products, but whatever, this is, this is good enough for now. Now inside of the Stripe product helper here, we're initializing, we're passing down that product from the database and we're also passing down the params that came in. And what this allows us to do is to make an API call to Stripe to create a Stripe product. Now it turns out that Stripe accepts a list of images. Right now product.photo is one of these active record attachment things. And so what we probably wanna do is say dot representation uh, medium dot processed dot URL. So the medium representation of the photo 
is going to use that variant, which is going to kind of like crop it a little bit potentially, or, or like resize it, not crop. It's not going to crop. It's going to resize it so that it fits within those maximum boundaries. And then dot processed says, give us the processed version of that and give us that URL. So we should be able to say something like dot um, representation uh, medium dot URL inside of um, inside of the terminal. This Rails console doesn't know that we set up variants yet. So now we get back this URL and that should give us the, the medium variant of that image. So what we can do now is we should be able to walk through the process now of creating a new product. So let's create a new product. We're gonna go to products, add a product. Okay, actually let's make it like build and learn ebook or something. Okay, all right, we're gonna choose this file and we're gonna give it the logo. It will have a single currency. And now when we click on checkout and we're redirected to Stripe checkout, it's going to use the image URL from Ncroc. So that's super cool. And now we can see the images inside of Stripe checkout. We can also go to our bucket inside of S3 and see that now there are, or there should be some images here. If we click on refresh, yeah, we can see a bunch of images are being uploaded. We can drill into that and see all of the different objects uh, or the, the image objects. Um, okay, so this is kind of steps, all the steps you might need to get started uploading images to S3. Uh, and we talked about using Ngrok as a way to surface this public URL. A couple of things we might do before we go to production. Number one, we need to go to production RB and make sure that it's using the right uh, storage sort of service. We, we would set that to Amazon. We would also want to go create a bucket called creators dash production so we can keep our development and production buckets separate. Hopefully this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.